Good evening. We have a quorum at 630. We'll call the planning board meeting to order. And since we have nobody in the waiting room for general information, we could just get on with our little points of discussion. Um, did you send out the post office information to everybody, Bill? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, not that we can do anything about it. We just got to make note that when we, we got to clarify, does that include any subdivision? As, as I read it, it's any new subdivision. And I do happen to know that they've, um, um, they're applying it to the, um, uh, the new one off the of Shattuck Road. Oh, they are, okay. Um, it's, going to it's going to create some interesting problems. Right now, most of us have a mailbox and it is in the, it's within the limits of the public way. You know, they're, they're in the layout of the street. Right. Um, but that's fine. You know, one mailbox, you know, nothing, unless you reinforced it like a tank, it's not a danger to anyone. Um, it's not a major imposition. But I'm seeing a, several problems. Is that, um, I know what, the, what the, the proposed ones look like. I've seen them here and there. Um, anyone who goes through North Hadley, you'll notice there's a, a multi-party mailbox in front of the, the house across from uh, North Hadley Hall, which is a, a fairly substantial piece of uh, metal and concrete. So we're introducing, uh, I think, a road hazard. Um, there will also be a question of whose property is it going to be on? Uh, some of our subdivisions are sort of classic subdivisions, if you will, the, the road the, with squares going out into a field, uh, like the one uh, next to you, Jim. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm not sure exactly where they put it. Um, and then they'll have people parking, getting out of their cars, um, accessing it. Yeah. <clears throat> it seems like what, what, happens if somebody, what happens if it gets clobbered? Whose responsibility and cost is it to replace it? Well, I suppose initially <clears throat> it would be an amenity that the developer would put in, but once the developer is gone, I guess it's on the it's like every subdivision going forward is going to have to set up a neighborhood association to pay for something like this. Yeah, those mailboxes are not very big either. I would uh, I would suggest, and I don't know if we can enforce that, that they always have them on the exit lane of the subdivision, so that if you queue up for your mail, you queue up on your on the subdivision property, not out on, under the street. Good idea. And maybe, and maybe we could make subdivisions have a little pull-off lane so that you can get over to the mailbox and not block the exit lane of your, you know. Well, if you want to see one, just come by East Street Commons. I mean, it's here. Yeah. Most people tend to walk to it to get a little exercise, but, and there's not that much maintenance to it. It's, you know, it's up off the curb. Is yours in the median? Yeah, yeah, okay. it's common property, but the whole thing's common property, you know? Right. Well, and you have a condo association, so you have yeah. a structure. Yeah, they're not, exactly, they're not doing anything to it right now. I mean, the, the only thing that's been done, is been, it's been painted. There's really no maintenance. You got to sweep up once in a while to shovel out the snow. But um, they're, they're, it's in a little cabana. And, uh, is that a colonial? Right, it, is, it is common property. That's interesting. You, you do have to, if you drive up, you do have to get out of your car to go to get the mail, but there's never, never people backed up. I mean, the mail comes here at about 1, 1.30, 2 o'clock. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm not very concerned about people backing up, you know, getting, I mean, it's not like you're going to have a, a 50 lot subdivision where you're going to have tons and tons of the stuff. No. Most of the subdivisions are going to have, what, 10 or a dozen of lots on it, so it won't be so bad. But it's, you know, it's this, if it gets hot, if it gets hit, it's, it's where my concern is, you know, set up a neighborhood association to take care of, to pay for a new one. That's going to be, that could be a bit of an issue. Um, uh, it, it, it almost be impossible to hit ours, but I guess it'd be possible. Not, not probable, but possible. <laughs> well, yeah, but yours is immediate, but most of them are not going to have a median to put it into. Yeah. You know, it's going to be like, you know, you know, off to one side, either the entrance or the exit of the street. We're yeah. not going to be the first town that's going to be wrestling with this issue. So uh, yeah. we'll ask Ken to search around and we can we can ask uh, friends and neighbors too how their town handles it. Well, we may actually be among the first because that it, Colony Estates got hit with this. Yeah. And we've already approved them. It's not like we can go back and reopen it because uh, because of this. I mean, I suppose with the uh, upon the request, but lots are already being sold out of there. So, yeah, I, it's sort of a question of you know who owns what in in Colony at least. You remember there are well, maybe you won't, but there are some irregular little flaps, uh, little blobs of land on each side of the um, road at the right up at the intersection with. Uh, in fact, I can pull that up, I think. Let me just see. Uh, at least there's a place to uh, a place to put it, but it still gets into the question of who owns it. Who takes responsibility, who clears it, who maintains it? Uh, well, yeah, who clears it? I mean, who's, uh, um, who's responsible for plowing it? We, we did get an email that I sent around to everybody. Um, From the DPW, yeah. Uh, DPW doesn't want to be responsible for it. <laughs> Potato, not mine. And, and, and nor should the DPW be responsible for it. Okay, I'm going to screen share now. And that's a good question. Is that our responsibility if we approve a subdivision that we make sure that they they meet their legal rights for things such as that? Or that's you know, that's something legislated by it's not our jurisdiction really. Yeah, it's one of those things that's subject to approval of others if and as required. Right, um, right. So with Colony, he has this parcel A down here hmm. and a uh, landscape and maintenance easement up here. So per your suggestion, you know, parcel A could, it could be mounted on parcel A. Yeah. Of course, I suspect the post office would rather it be mounted, you know, to, to service parcel A, the, the, the mail truck has to come, turn around and come back. That's, so that's what they get. They <laughs> when they probably, have an unfunded mandate, they get what they get. <laughs> uh, you know, they got, they got doors on both sides of the mail truck. You can get out either side. I guess. Um, he, he may have a, you know, a, a dime turning radius with his LLV. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm worried about things like who's, how, how is the snow going to get cleared? Who's responsible if a uh, homeowner attempts to climb over an unreasonable pile of snow before it gets cleared? And within the condo, it's part of clearing the walks, but yeah. if there um, were walks here, yeah. <laughs> Basically, you walk down the street and you go to the mailbox, and you know you might have a little slush along the way, but the roads are generally cleared. Okay. When was this one approved? Uh, May five of twenty eighteen. That was before me. Right. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it looks like uh, John Michkowski at top. Right, and I did not participate in this one. 
So what was the little dipsy do at the end? That was like to keep you from firing down the street. That's a little slow down curve. That's interesting. Oh, I guess it gives you the 90 degree angle. It, it, the... Yeah, it gives you the 90 degree angle to Shattuck Road, which itself is like a 45 degree angle. Yeah, yeah. So um, there's a detection uh, pod there too, Mark. Oh, is there? Okay. Yeah. Do you know, is that on parcel A or B or? Yes, parcel A. Oh, um, so yeah, there's, there's just a little one there. Most of it, most everything drains to the back, hmm. but uh, yeah, there's a little rise and there is a detention um structure in there. So, um, Have we you know, I, I, I'll just pass along that I've been in contact <laughs> with the developer and he has been getting absolutely nowhere with the um, the post office. You know, he's trying to make the point that um. The, um, you know, the, the people are being discriminated against here. They're getting lesser service than anyone else in a similar situation uh, off of Shattuck Road, at least. Yeah. So. Um, if I were the developer, I would argue, but you know, he, he, he doesn't want to spend the money, but you know, he could say, I laid this out. To, to sell lots before, and now you're changing this after I've had this all approved, you know. Uh, he might have a he might have a chance at a class action suit there, but I don't think one developer on their own is going to budge the USPS train. <laughs> no, uh, that is true. It is probably. Going to, it would probably, and I'm not speaking for any one developer, but it probably is more cost effective to set up um, a this this mail station, and then it is to fight over it. But yeah. once you set it up, um, yeah, you get trouble down the road for then, years. Yeah. Then you're out of here, and um, um, <clears throat> it's not like a property owner is going to let's say the owner of lot one probably is not going to be raising his or her hand to uh, take over parcel a yeah. and whatever liability goes with it um so i i think it is something that we will i think that's all we need of that uh, it is something that i uh, i hope ken has some thoughts on it. Mike, with yours, do people tend to, did you say that people usually walk to it or do they stop? Yeah, their they car walk and, to it. It's, I mean, it's not like it's an active place, okay? And there's there's several, right? There's one for the front cluster and one for the rear no, cluster? No, no, there's, there's just one. And you've, oh, got, you've got a mailbox for each person, yeah. each, each house. And then down below, you've got four larger boxes to take parcel, big larger parcels. Right. And, right. and they stick a key in your mailbox if you get a parcel. Right. It's kind of a socialization way to meet, meet people. <laughs> 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 Millie, Millie uh, uh, what's your name? Millie Matusko and somebody else walk there every day. I see him walking and it's kind of. <laughs> but the, the thing with that one, Mark, is that they've got, a, they've got an association that is right. responsible for snow plowing, so they clear it out right. routinely. But it's, gonna, you know, it's, there's nothing to clean out really. You you might get a little snow in there, but not much. But they, they plow right up to the curb. You get to the curb, I pull my car up there, get out of the car, get my mail, and come back to my house. You know, it's. Hmm. I, I mean, we have... We're going to have to kind of wait and see how it works out with the first one. Devils in the details. So the situation on Colony Drive is that uh, the town is plowing it, right? Um, but they're only plowing the roadway. Right. Yeah. And speaking of what you said earlier, Jim, when you were you were down in the Boston area, uh, Linda and I went to Boston today. They have not finished clearing. Uh, oh really. The, the the full we were on Star Drive and there's oh, okay. one exit off Star Drive is supposed to be two lanes and everybody knows it's two lanes but they've only cleared one lane of snow. Okay. So you have people kind of 
confused about what well it, it was okay. probably it would have been considered sexist if they cleared two <laughs> yeah well of course you know i was out in franklin and foxborough area and then and in warwick war warwick rhode island so that I mean there's a that's a whole lot more um suburban if you would than boston it's boston proper by any stretch yeah but but you know here clearly when they're plowing they take care when they go by there if you got the town coming in with a big snow plow they just bury that thing you know what i mean yeah oh yeah Well, Bill and Bill and I both lived in Boston for a while. Bill lived there when he went to college. And I lived there for a while when I worked there. And when they plow snow, boy, if, if some way back when we were there, back in the 70s, if something was in your way, your yeah. way it may not be in your way too long. <laughs> yeah. And if you were if you are on if you were not on an emergency route, you could leave your car. But not only do you have to deal with all the snow that came down, but you have to deal with all the snow that was plowed. So they'll yeah. they'll plow down the middle and uh, you might pile it up on cars on both sides. You yeah. might lose a mirror too. Yeah, uh, and, if we, and if it was a few days and you got a little bit of rain, you now had a you now <laughs> had to chip your car out of about two feet of ice. Well, then you shovel the space out, you leave, and you put a chair there and. Somebody takes your chair and tosses it and yeah. steals your parking place. And uh -huh. that's, that's how you make friends. I know. Yeah, I lived in Somerville for a. Um, okay, so I mean, we're just going to have to wait and see on the post office on the, on the mailbox stuff. And, you know, it, no, now that's going to be someplace like a uh, mall is going to have common mailboxes too. That's the intent, I believe, Bill. Yes, it seems to say that new, uh, new and renovated buildings. Uh, you know, that that's been the case for a while, though. Uh, at our office building does not have individual delivery. Um, I mean, they uh, everybody in our building has a post office box, but that's because we sh almost share a parking lot with the post office. Um, but I think that's what they're planning on for other parcels as well and i'm not sure that that hasn't already happened um i don't know what the uh i haven't taken a look but the uh, uh little uh multi-purpose two multi-purpose buildings on the south side of route nine you know around call it uh 225 russell street um where the, there's a dentist office in there um I don't know what they have, but I assume they probably do not have. They they probably do have central a central delivery area. Yeah. Okay. What else do we have? I have nothing else. I don't really have anything else either. Uh, you know what? Uh, you know, Jim and I have to get together talk about uh, support staff and policies for that. Yeah. Um, Is there any, any news on the Goodwin building and what our future might be going there? Is, it, is the MBC still working on that or? Well, well they got a plan for it, but the problem is funding to do what, the, for the funding to meet the plan, you're talking some very expensive things. And I'm not, I don't want to put money, no, I don't want to put a number out there because I don't want to get it all blown out of proportion, but it's, it's pricey. And with the conditions of the town, they're just kind of hesitant to be trying to expend that kind of money when we're extremely watching our pocketbooks. Is there anyone that in town that could apply for a community development block grant or anything like that to preserve that building and make it retrofitted to you know there's 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 money out there if you know there are people who know how to go, go after that well if you can get a line on anybody who might be able to help and at least give that name to uh carolyn the town administrator that would be that would be helpful one thing that's been discussed a little bit is that 
we had initially been talking about um, having our files in the basement for, and of course that'll have to be climate controlled to some extent. We'll need to at least have dehumidifiers running down there so we don't mold everything. But um, perhaps not, perhaps using um, the community room in the library rather than you, the, it's going to take a, a lot of work to get the, even the first floor of Goodwin handicapped accessible. Uh, there's a ramp, uh, there's no elevator, and there are no um, toilet facilities, not even water on, the, on that, that floor. Whereas um, there is a, apparently a very well-equipped meeting room in the library, which is just across the driveway between the two buildings. And apparently it has electronics in there that people have not yet begun to assess. <laughs> so I would hope that they have like a phase one, phase two, like phase one is adapting what's there and phase two would be what you were saying was that costly addition on the north side with the stair, the, the elevator and the bathrooms, right? That's, oh, I think the, I've, I've seen that plan. Yeah, the only architect on the committee has resigned. That was David. Yeah. David. So, um, and I'm not suggesting you uh, <laughs> rush over to volunteer, but um, I have not actually, I, I follow the uh, meeting schedules uh, fairly closely. I haven't seen that they've even had a meeting recently. Um, I need it. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Bill. You know, I know a lot of the function, uh, a lot of the attention at Town Hall left the bandwidth is on budget right now. So yep. uh, there's no one pushing to uh, right. to do this. Any ideas or predictions what's going to happen with uh, the governor and Zoom meetings in April, Bill? I've heard not a peep. Okay. I saw that uh, Amherst, the Amherst Town Council recently had a... Um, a motion to to go to remote meetings, which was defeated. Um, they are meeting partially in person, partially by Zoom, with the doors closed to the public. So the public can attend by Zoom. They have, I don't know how many town councilors they have, call it 15. Uh, 10 of them are sitting in a room with masks on, and five of them are Zooming in. Okay. And the ones who are zooming in are saying you can't tell who's talking among the people who are there. That's truly hybrid. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I just haven't heard a word. And I guess there was a suggestion that uh, perhaps we should uh, contact our uh, state um, legislators. Um, you know, someone might say about some politicians, how do you know when they're talking? <laughs> you can see their lips move. With a mask, you can't see. I guess, how do you know they're saying something? <laughs> can't tell which side of the mouth they're talking about. Yeah, exactly. Any so, news with um, the Esalon parking? Everything's been fine there. And anything new with... Uh, Mr. Michelson, he's is that withdrawn or still? Well, I drove by. I drove by Esalen. Esalen, I go come. by there routinely, and I have seen absolutely nothing. They're doing an excellent job of keeping the parking on their parcel. That's good. Well, I give a shout out to Joyce Chungla. That was a Mr. Michelson has, uh, as in our one meeting, he did withdraw with a condition that when he does apply, you know, we have to pay for the legal notice and the mailings. There'll be no filing fee. And that's fine. Um, he's got, I think he asked for, was it a five-year window on that bill, something yeah. like that? 60 months. 60 months, five years. So that's, you know, that's all fine. Okay. Um, let's see, we did get a, I think, did you send out a thing on the batteries to everybody, Bill? Uh, uh, the solar batteries. Yeah, what about, the, what, what thing? 
the, uh, the the decision from town council on solar battery? Oh, I haven't seen, I haven't seen it. I I have been out. Um, let me see. Did he? Uh, I thought you you gave it. I thought you sent it to me. Uh, he and I talked yesterday, but he may have sent you something. Um, I'm I don't see anything from him. Oh. I thought I sent in a re I copied you on the request for an opinion. Yeah. And I did talk with him yesterday and I am not seeing anything from him to the planning board address. I am seeing a lot of a um, lot of things in my junk folder for planning board that are not junk. So I'm not sure what's happening there. But uh, I, I don't see anything from Jeff Blake or anyone in his office. Should we be prepared to perhaps take this as a zoning article to town meeting? Yes, we should. Uh, we should discuss it. it. It's not up for discussion, but I think I am going to add a. Um, um, I'm going to add to our uh, standing agenda uh, town meeting zoning articles. So we can discuss what we what we want to bring forward. Okay. So, I, um, yeah, I, I suspect what I will do when we, if you have think you have uh, something from Jeff. Like, no, no, I, it was, I was actually reading, I was reading by mistake, I thought it was, it was actually Tom Quinlan's re, re, re letter that I was reading, not, not the reply oh, okay. from town council. Okay. Um, I will share that as soon as it comes in, and I will also share it with the um, applicant when it comes in. Okay. It, it will affect, it, it seems like it will affect how we proceed next week or two weeks. Are you gonna share it simultaneously with the applicant before we have a chance to look at it and comment on it? Um, yes, I think so. there's no, Okay. it is the opinion of town council. Uh -huh. So we asked for the opinion, we got the opinion. Okay. It is what it is. Uh, is it a, it's, it's a public document at that time? I'm just curious. Yes, it is. Okay. In, unless it comes with a, Unless they tag yeah. it as privileged, yes, um, and we have we have no basis for discussing whatever they come up with in um, executive session. Mm -hmm. So um, just pass it along when it arrives. Okay. Um... So we have the battery storage in two weeks. We have Ken Comia in two weeks, and we have an administrative review of the Wilga property. Of right. the Wilga property. Yeah. We did have someone who sent in an approval not required plan, um, and I sent that around to everybody. But uh, I also sent them uh, a link to tonight's meeting, and they. Uh, they didn't make it, so um, um, I'll follow up with them tomorrow, perhaps, and tell them they can come to our next meeting. Do you do you have that plan, Bill? Can you just bring it up so we can look at it and think it over? We probably shouldn't discuss it without the applicant, but nevertheless, just to 
Uh, sure. Let's see. On, on another note, while you find that, I've been holding uh, Zoom meetings at home for a volunteer effort I'm doing. And one of the volunteers on our committee is deaf or mostly deaf. And she pointed out to me, um, I happen to have the, the UMass Zoom account. So it has the, all the bells and whistles that there has a live transcription, which then, you know, it's like having the closed caption at the bottom that um, I wonder if that's something that we should, you know, I'll, maybe I'll bring that up at my, you know, diversity, equity, and inclusion, but it might be something that town meetings might want, you know, meet, municipal meetings might want to consider. I'm assuming that whatever Hadley Media has or whatever the town Zoom account is, they probably have that, that feature. I do not see that feature. It should be down at the bottom right where there's the three dots and you click uh, three dots at the bottom right on my version on my other computer. And then it, there's options for live transcript and uh, no. Nope. On mm -hmm. my main screen, my uh, my lower right is a big red end button. Okay. And uh, no, but yeah, at at the right end of all your menus on the bottom, there should be at least on mine, the version I have from UMass. There's okay. three dots, which is like you know others, other. Nope. No, other I no, I do not have uh, anything okay. other. And reactions, record and reactions right. are my last two buttons. Okay. All right. So it may be, uh, we do not have the- The pro version maybe? The pro version. Uh, mm. Let me just check preferences. Uh, we, have a, we have a signs language person at town meeting, right? In the, yeah, on the front. Yes. Yeah. 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 Wasn't that at the Olympics once that they had some guy that was a fraud that was pretending to be the sign language guy just to be up there on the stage and he didn't know what he was doing with his that was like 10 oh, years ago. I think you're right. That was like that was like 10 years ago. That was there's an idiot in every orchard. Okay, no, I do not see a way to access it, but let me add that to the list and I can ask Jennifer. Okay. Well, if we're trying to trim the budget, and that's a more expensive version, we probably won't. But, and I don't know of anyone who's complained. But and I, I tell you, I've, I've been to some meetings, and I find it very distracting. When you're, is there? It's like having you know this interpreted in Spanish going off toward the bottom or something. But, no, I know. My my partner and I are always arm wrestling up during the movie. Captions on, caption off. I'm like, it's yeah. it's blocking part of the. Yeah. So let's see. I'm not. Okay. Yes, there it is. So. <sighs> Okay, I have found it. For the subdivision for the ANR? Uh, yeah. I'm just trying to figure out why I cannot access it. The number is what, 32, Russell? 132. 132, 132, Russell. Okay. Yeah. 
It's signed. You want to give me a screen share, Bill? I'll try to call mine up, see if it opens. Yeah, let me just, uh, I, I just have a spinning beach ball at the moment. So, uh, Asking it to do too much at once, I guess. Yeah, it's asking a lot of bandwidth on the north end of town. Well, if you can't pull it up, uh, where where is 132, Jim? There's the a corner of uh, Russell Street and Goff Street. Yeah, isn't there like a dentist's office or something there? No. You muted yourself, Bill. Which one's Goff and which one's Whaley? A uh, golf is further east. Okay. I think that's like across from Hopkins, isn't it? All right. Okay, Hopkins. Jim, you, you can share now. Whaley's were. Yeah, well. Which one is where subs, yeah. subs used to be? Did that work? That's golf. Can yes. you see it? Yes. We... The subdivision? Uh, no, uh, actually. I'm not seeing it. I can see it now. They want two lots out, out of that. So when they do appear, if you know, if you can't pull it up, it will just give us an opportunity to drive by it and take a snapshot in our mind's eye. Okay. There a, yeah, there was a house on the south lot and there was a barn or garage on the north lot. Okay, I was I've been able to pull it up, so let me see if I can share it. I hope I don't know why mine doesn't share. I'm, I'm gonna be doing something wrong here. Here it comes here we go. So the okay. video parlor and tattoo place are down here. Seb's is over here. This is a um, An office building, office right? Office building. I think there's a house right about here. Yeah. And then the dentist, former dentist office, is over here. Okay. And then. Um, and then there's the uh, Greenfield uh, Bank is here yeah. and uh, Dunkin' Donuts yeah. is here. Got it. Got it. So I will enlarge it a bit and. <clears throat> So it seems to have more than 150 feet frontage on each side of the corner lot, 189 feet of frontage on lot two, 170 feet of depth. So the square will fit on either one. No, yeah, I mean, seems to meet zoning, so. Well, we're not sure because uh, are, is it one seventy five foot frontage and uh, it's a corner lot. Yeah, it's one hundred and eighty feet of frontage on uh, Goff Street, off and one hundred and sixty four feet of frontage on Russell Street. Okay, how about lot two? One hundred and eighty nine feet of frontage on Goff and one seventy in depth. Does it have the total square footage? But they're both, they're over 30,000. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, got to tear the barn down probably, but that's. Well, to put a house to the front barn probably have to come down, but that, I don't think that barn's in great condition if I remember. I, I believe you're correct. So. Well, it's, it'd be good to start reclaiming this area. Some of the buildings on Russell Street, I mean, uh, on Railroad Street are just horrible graffiti and yeah. Oh yeah, down at down at Wally, there's a bunch of graffiti.
So we'll take that up at our next meeting. So. Okay, it looks like we prolonged the meeting long enough to justify yeah. our 50 cents an hour. So. <laughs> <laughs> Anything new uh, on the state and the highway, the Route 9? Well, I know that, I mean, uh, there, from what I have heard, and that's not a lot, the state is slowly moving forward, but they haven't gone, I don't know they've gone off for any bidding or anything yet. I don't know how many properties they've actually um, done something with as far as easements and stuff. Yeah, it looked like exotic um, vacated theirs. I, I believe they have filed all of their takings okay. and they are paying making payment as uh as warranted um i believe they may have some contracts out to bid or subcontracts i'm not quite sure how it works but it looks like they will be underway okay i noticed that they're gonna have quite a few wetlands filings too aren't they there's a whole lot of culverts they're going to be dealing with. I believe they did work their way through a lot of those already. Okay. Come there on. was uh, just about the time when the select board declined to reappoint Paulette. Um, they were in the middle of hearings on... Um, with uh, the DP, uh, the Mass Highway consultants. Okay. So that would have been um, what last last spring? No, la last fall I think was. The, well, no, I don't know when that was. I think it was in the late summer. Okay. So yes, that was definitely uh, that was underway at that point. Okay. Because there was an issue about whether there were enough people. The, there was some changes. There was an intent to change the size of the Conservation Commission. Uh, <clears throat> there was a question about whether there were enough people present to actually vote. And because we had adopted the um, the statute that said someone who misses a meeting can um, view it and certify that they are up to speed, people were able to come back. <laughs> or I guess uh, someone who wasn't at the meeting was able to, uh, was able to act. <laughs> you that, your, remember, Bill? Is that your paralegal? Yes. <laughs> Mac, Mac and Macy remind me, um, you know, they're, they're, uh, they are as effective as the timer on my uh, iPhone. They remind me of breakfast, lunch, and dinner <laughs> very reliably. <laughs> That's great. My cat cheats. If I come home early, she <laughs> thinks it's dinner time. Well, they've already been fed. I fed them early. <laughs> because of uh, the meeting, but- uh, Oh, you make a mess of their schedule, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so the, she's, just, she's just lobbying to see if uh, she can get me to cough up some more food. <laughs> and th th then they do annoying things. And then sometimes but when they reach out to touch you, it's like a hem. Ahem. I'm yeah. here. And don't forget me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, well, I have nothing else. Anybody have anything? Nope. nope. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I think history. Thank you. And thank you, John. I think Mac is in agreement, too. Oh, this is Macy. Oh, that's me.